headlights glint on wet tarmac. The dazzle blinding them every few seconds. People scurry past on slippery pavements, passing cars sending spray over their shoes. Piles of leaves lie in sodden heaps against railings, their bright colours darkening to dull brown. An empty road, Jacob running. The squeal of wet brakes, the thud as he hits the windscreen and the spin of his body before it slams onto the road. A blurred windscreen, blood pooling beneath Jacob's head. A single cloud of white breath. The scream cuts through my sleep, jolting me awake. The sun isn't up yet, but the light in the bedroom is on. I can't bear to feel the darkness around me. Heart pounding, I concentrate on slowing my breathing. In and out. In and out. The silence is oppressive rather than calming, and my fingernails carve crescents into my palms as I wait for the panic to subside. My dreams are becoming more intense, more vivid. I see him. I hear the sickening crack of his head on the tarmac. The nightmares didn't start straight away, but now they're here, they won't stop. I lie in bed each night, fighting sleep and playing out scenarios in my head, like those children's books where the reader chooses the ending. I squeeze my eyes tightly shut and walk through my alternative ending. The one where we set off five minutes earlier, or five minutes later. The one where Jacob lives and is even now asleep in his bed, dark eyelashes resting upon rounded cheeks. But nothing changes. Each night I will myself to wake earlier, as though by disturbing the nightmare I can somehow reverse reality. But it seems a pattern has been set, and for weeks now I have woken several times a night to the thud of a small body on the bumper and to my own fruitless scream as he rolls off and slams onto the wet road. I've become a hermit, cloistered within the stone walls of this cottage, venturing no further than the village shop to buy milk and living off little more than toast and coffee. Three times I've decided to visit Bethan at the caravan park. Three times I've changed my mind. I wish I could make myself go. It's been a very long time since I had a friend, and just as long since I have needed one. I make a fist with my left hand, then unfurl my fingers stiff from a night's sleep. The pain rarely troubles me now, but I have no sensation in my palm, and two of my fingers have stayed numb. I squeeze my hand to chase away the pins and needles. I should have gone to the hospital, of course, but it seemed so insignificant in comparison to what had happened to Jacob the pain so justly deserved. So instead, I bandaged the injury as best I could, gritting my teeth as each day I pulled away the dressing from the damaged skin. Gradually it healed, the lifeline on my palm hidden forever beneath a layer of scars. <laughs>